In this Wrestle Talk news, the real reason behind Miro's AEW absence, a Big E injury update, and stars continue to tease their return to WWE. So subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk! Now, during his appearance on AEW Dynamite this week, rapper Rick Ross did the thing that we all do when faced with someone tall or big. Just sort of go, gosh, you're you're tall. Whoa, you're big. Not in those exact words, though. The exact words he used were big mother effer. And it's a sort of salty language which could get AEW in trouble with their broadcaster and potentially some of the more sensitive members of their audience. Ross, though, appears completely unapologetic for his choice of words, even going so far as to phone into Busted Open Radio with Bully Ray and Tommy Dreamer to let them know that no one tells him what to say. He said, I'm taking you behind the scenes. This is the biggest boss in the game, Ricky Rose. So no one can tell me what to say. You see, it was a gift for me to be there, but I love AEW, but it was a huge gift. He then went on to explain what drove him to say that about Keith Lee too. He said, when I got in there, I may have had other things on my mind, but like I said, when Keith Lee kind of turned his back to me and I realized the size and width of his shoulders and his trapezoids, I just had to express my heart. He's a big mother He really is. He really is. He, he really is. He really is massive. Speaking of the large lovers of mothers, Miro has been absent from AEW television for some time and many reports came out recently that the suggested AEW creative had nothing for him to do, which does seem mad. It does, it does, yeah. Mighty earwig Dave Meltzer, though, has heard something completely different, saying on Wrestling Observer Radio, In September, Tony Khan came to Miro and he had this idea which would build to a match on the November pay-per-view and Miro didn't want to do it. It involved, it's weird. A lot of the people who come from WWE are very leery, obviously Brian Danielson being the exception, about doing jobs. And then it becomes very difficult to book when you don't really want to do programs where you're going to lose. But he did note that November was the start of a new cycle and a chance for new storylines to start, so they could now have something for Miro that is until his wife comes in and says Rusev Day is going to come back and everybody goes back to WWE. And if I'm Tony Khan at this point, why waste my time pushing this guy? I got 100 guys on the roster who want to be here and now you've got these guys who want want to be in WWE. Now, whether Mira actually wants to rejoin WWE or that's just a rumor that's floating around all remains to be seen, but he's not the only AEW star now being tied to WWE by news stories just today. FTR's Dax Harwood was on the latest Gentleman Villain podcast and talking up Cody Rhodes, one of AEW's founders and easily their biggest defector to WWE. Dax said that while he initially had an issue with Cody Rhodes after Cody made some comments about FTR practicing their matches, he said, I got over it. He and I are very good friends now. We talk all the time. I think that he is a visionary. I think that he is too smart for his own good. And I hope to be able to work with him very, very soon because I think I could tear it up with him. I mean, you know where you need to go to do that, Dax, don't you? You know where you need to go. Sticking with AEW and it's time for a long overdue update on the health of Adam Cole because Cole has been absent for the entirety of 2022 second half following a very concerning concussion sustained during his four-way IWGP world title match at Forbidden Door in June. Not only that, but at the time of the injury, Cole was also dealing with a torn labrum, something he decided not to get operated on. Concern over Cole's lengthy absence has led to rumours regarding his wrestling future with the Wrestling Observer's Dave Meltzer stating in October that Cole's return could be tomorrow or could be never and further echoing concerns again in November. November. However, it is the season and now Meltzer has provided a much more positive update on Cole tweeting he's doing much better. He said the last I heard is they were being cautious, don't have any time frame for a return. With concussions, you can't predict the time frame. So while Meltzer's update hasn't exactly given us too much to go on, it is the first positive bit of news regarding Cole in a while, so we're going to take it. We'll have that. Thank you. Put it in the bag. Continuing the theme of much appreciated injury updates and former WWE champion Big E has provided us all with an insight into his recovery journey. The former WWE champion who has been out of action since suffering from a broken neck on the March 11th edition of SmackDown recently gave an update on his progress with these urban times stating, so I have to get more scans. The one year mark is in March and then we'll see how everything's looking. On the possibility of an in-ring return in the near future, Big E gave reassurances that it is still the goal, albeit very dependent on his C1 vertebrae. Brain. He said, it's my C1 that's broken in two spots. So obviously I want to be very smart about that. I was very fortunate. So I just want to make sure I'm making the best decision. We'll see in March. I feel great. I'm really thankful for that. I don't have any nerve issues, no strength issues, no impairment whatsoever. Obviously to get back in the ring to do what we do, I want to make sure that my C1 is rock solid. Other than that, I'm very blessed. 
I feel great. Above all else in that, it's great to hear that Big E's positivity continue despite his extremely challenging 2022. So here's hoping for some more good news in the new year. And we at WrestleTalk would like to extend our well wishes to both Big E and Adam Cole in their recoveries. Switching gears now to two individuals that could be joining Big E in WWE very soon, that being husband and wife pairing Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green. Because reports have swirled regarding Trips' interest in the pair with Green and Cardona, fueling the speculation via social media posts and interview comments in recent months. Cardona has spoken publicly on his desire to win the WWE Championship, while Green has spoken of her unfinished business in the company. Green has also this week drawn attention by removing her OnlyFans page, leading some to believe that this is related to her signing with WWE. This was all backed up by Dave Meltzer and yesterday's Wrestling Observer Radio, where Meltzer claims that Green removing her account suggests that she could be set for a main roster debut instead of NXT, where there is more leeway over OnlyFans and other similar pages, but not, not actually that much leeway because Mandy Rose. Green herself has now dropped a curious tweet of her main roster debut match against Charlotte Flair, adding to the speculation that she is WWE bound. As for Cardona though, things are far less cut and dry because already Cardona's 2023 is looking pretty packed to the gills with him being advertised for a January 13th Impact tag title shot at the promotion's hard to kill event. While across in NWA, he's been announced to face off with the NWA world champion Tyrus for a contract signing on the January 31st edition of Power, a whole three days after WWE's Royal Rumble on the 28th. So yeah, maybe we'll just have to wait a bit longer for Green and Cardona to be reunited in the E. Staying with the topic of WWE and returning ex-stars and former four-time world champion Alberto Del Rio has been in the news again this week by revealing that he had held talks with the old WWE regime, particularly John Laurinaitis, regarding a possible return to the company. Del Rio even labelled himself one of Johnny's boys, something nobody sh should be saying these days. Despite all the contact with Johnny Ace though, Del Rio revealed that it never went very far, something backed up by a new report from Fightful Select that even the old regime, and more specifically Laurinaitis, never had real interest in bringing the controversial star back, saying there was no f***ing way that will happen. Imagine being turned down by Johnny Ace. So how about the new regime? Any chance they'd welcome Del Rio back on board? Unsurprisingly, nah, nah. According to Fightful's WWE higher-up source, the WWE Del Rio interest was and has recently always been a one-way street with Del Rio contacting Laurinaitis to gauge interest rather than the other way around. And despite all the returning faces that Trips has brought in, it's highly unlikely that Del Rio will be one of them. Moving away from WWE now, and this week's edition of Dynamite saw the debut of yet another AEW faction with Swerve Strickland's mogul affiliates serving Keith Lee with a severe case of the beats, all while being narrated by the truly amazing Ricky Rose. I know that's not how you say it, I just like it. While fans will maybe recognize Parker Bordreau, who has been with the company since August as a member of Aria Davari's forgettable Truthbusters faction, Swerve's other muscle was a true unknown for many, or well, that is, unless you're a baseball aficionado. Because yes, according to Fight for Select Sean Ross Sapp, the heavily tattooed individual is Grandon Gertzman, a former pro baseball player and student of fellow AEW star Jay Lethal's wrestling school. While Gertzman and Bordreau seem like a bit of an odd fit with Swerve, we'll refrain from passing too much judgment till we have actually seen more of the group. Oh, before you Truth Busters fans out there, don't you fret, as the group's founder, Ari Davari, has clarified that despite Bordreau jumping over to mogul affiliates, he will always be a Truth Buster 4444 life. And to finish up today, it seems that along with debuting new factions, AEW could be set to debut at least one new pay-per-view in 2023. According to Fightful, on December 19th, AEW filed to trademark the terms Wrestle Bowl and Wrestling Bowl, with the intent of covering the categories of conducting entertainment exhibitions in the nature of wrestling exhibits and performances by professional wrestlers. If this leads to another AEW pay-per-view, it could potentially take their total to six pay-per-views in the calendar year, with Tony Khan confirming that he's almost certain 2022's new edition of Forbidden Door will continue in 2023, back at the ROH Final Battle Media Scrum. The change seems to also align with comments Carr made on Busted Open Radio regarding the hiring of Jeff Jarrett as the company's director of business development, with Khan stating at the time that Jarrett's role could see AEW expand their live event calendar in the coming year. I mean, do you like AEW's original four pay-per-view a year format, or do you, do you want more? Let us know in the comments down below. Have a happy Friday, have a happy bloody Christmas, have a happy holidays. Have a happy whatever. Have a just leave me alone. It's the end of the year. Piss off. Piss off. In this Wrestle Talk news, Edge may be a free agent very soon. Matt Riddle breaks his silence, plus our review of Dynamite Holiday Bash.